ladies and gentlemen, the IDW first, the first IDW Hasbro universe is back. Briefly, but it's back. <laughs> Briefly. A new issue has come out recently of a comic, um, a limited series titled Rom, Dire Wraiths. Uh, and it's a s sort of prequel to the ROM series in the IDW universe, but it is set in the original IDW universe. It's incredible to see, uh, after we thought it was done for for like a year now, a miniseries coming out that follows up on some stuff from the IDW universe while establishing a new story and expanding the universe. So, uh... I just wanted to review this. Like I, I said before that I would uh, review Dire Wraiths um, before I even knew it was part of the IDW universe, but, you know, it was a it was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. So, Rom Dire Wraiths number one is really two stories. One small step for Dire Wraith kind, and one small step for a space knight. One small step for a space knight is a backup story that's a prequel to the uh, one small step for Dire Wraith kind uh, issue or story, uh, very much taking a uh, taking a card from the deck of the original ROM, oh, not original, the IDW ROM series, where you had the main story and then you had like Tales from the Soul Star Order that like gave a little more backup information, a prequel. Even though now we're entering prequel of a prequel territory, but basically it's set July 1969, the Apollo 11 moon landing. And uh, we see, you know, the Apollo 11 astronauts and stuff, but we also learn that there is a satellite orbiting the moon sent by the United Nations, maybe? Or Earth in general, because there are, there is a Russian agent, like a openly Russian agent, like not a secret Russian agent, but a Russian agent and some other people on this satellite called Adventure One. And it's monitoring the moon for inhuman threats. Now I thought, oh, that's interesting, it's called Adventure One. Could it be the Adventure Team? But, like, that doesn't work, though, because the Adventure Team was formed in the 80s, and right now we're in 1969. Which, when originally introduced in the IDW universe, the Adventure Team was kind of hinted at being a lot earlier than what it when it ended up actually taking place, when dates were applied to it uh, later on in Revolutionaries and stuff like that. So I was like, nah, it's just a coincidence that this Cold War era thing is called Adventure 1. Come to find out, it might actually be an Adventure Team outpost. Uh, the Americans, at least, make reference to uh, Bullet Man and Atomic Man. Uh, and in the 60s, how old is Atomic Man? I thought he was born in like the late 50s or something like that, I'm not sure. But isn't Atomic Man, wouldn't he be kind of young? <laughs> Like, especially young, in 1969? I don't know, but uh, they do reference that uh, there is Atomic Man and Bullet Man who are Adventure Team members, even though this is 1969, suggesting that maybe the Adventure Team was made earlier. I need to recheck the original material to see like when exactly the dates, like if there's room, wiggle room, to say, yeah, but they were also operating in 1969. Um, and these Adventure Team members are people we don't really know. Uh, these are new characters, one of which is a Russian who makes fun of the fact that they have a dude called Atomic Man. <laughs> but um, so but the Russian, the reason that Adventure One is out there uh, waiting for like inhuman threats is because the Russian, uh, she had something. She was part of something called Operation Subterranea, where she saw inhuman creatures inside the Earth. That could be one of two things. One, we've seen dire wraiths like under the Earth's surface before. And we know the dire wraiths exist on Earth at this time. But, uh, so maybe she went underground and saw the dire wraiths. But they do, like, play around with words to reference that she saw something that was inhuman. They really focus on using inhuman. Quite frankly, I believe this to be the introduction of the Inhumanoids into the IDW universe. And you know, I'm fine with all the in the Inhumanoids being introduced just as a throwaway line um, in this ROM book, but the fact that the Inhumanoids exist in this universe I am happy with. Thank you very much. Um, 
But meanwhile, we see some dire wraiths on the moon. They had stolen the ability to travel through space from a soul star knight, but they were supposed to get to Earth to join with the other group invading Earth, and they ended up on the moon. <laughs> they didn't have enough power, I guess. Didn't have enough magic. But then they see, oh, Apollo 11's coming, so we'll just possess them and then take the rocket back to Earth. And uh, the wraiths attack the Apollo people. But it's kind of funny, there's a scene where one of them is like trying to attack, but he keeps missing and failing because he's not used to the gravity. Which is weird, because as a space-faring race, you'd think the Dire Race would be used to trying to attack people in no-gravity areas, but whatever. One of the race does infect one of the Adventure, Adventure 1 crew members, and or, depending on how you look at it, an Adventure team member. So a wraith infects that person. That's sort of where we leave off. That's sort of the uh, the cliffhanger. And uh, the second story is uh, is just the showing like a flashback to the wraith stealing that space traveling power from one of the Soul Star Knights. We see Rom and we see Nikomi, who is the bear Soul Star Knight, uh, the bear space knight, which we really don't see that much of in the IDW universe. So I'm glad to see the bear play a larger role. Um, but it's nice seeing Rom back in action again. Uh, but yeah, thoughts on the story? Uh, they throw a lot of characters at you at once, and they I just I only I kind of read through the first issue real fast, but uh, those characters did not really uh, attach themselves to my brain well. Maybe after a few more readings, I'll be able to figure out who these characters are, what makes each one different from the other. Um, but I have so many questions about the relationship to the adventure team. I wonder if we're going to get any more Transformer references in this story. Um, maybe even throw in an Action Man, because this is really the last hoorah for the IDW universe. Although, the fact that this, is, that the fact that this exists opens up a precedent for new IDW comic, IDW universe stories. And, uh... So, here's what I'm going to say. I encourage all of you to go buy and read this new Rom Dire Wraiths issue. Uh, it's certainly better than the current Transformers comic coming out right now. It's certainly better than the current G.I. Joe comic. And it has the continu continuity to it. And if people get that book a lot, we can send a message to IDW saying, Hey, can you bring the IDW universe back, please? With quality? You know, there's a big asterisk beside there. With quality? <laughs> You know, uh, use that new creative team stuff. And I understand that this ROM book is made like the same writer who wrote the IDW ROM book. But if we can like get a new creative team for the new different Hasbro Universe books and bring back the original Hasbro Universe, that would be great. This is one of the first IDW books I've gotten that I am very happy with. Even though it's not so much on the story itself, because that still needs to be unraveled through future issues, but right now I'm just giddy at the IDW universe being present again. You know, it's not entirely dead. It's giving its last, like, two breaths. So, uh, and as it's doing so, it's introducing the Inhumanoids and fleshing out the Adventure Team a bit more. Unless it's... I hope they explain the whole, this, the Adventure Team being active in the 60s, when previous stuff hinted that they were made in the 80s. But we'll see. So yeah, that's my review for Dire Wraiths number one, Rom Dire Race number one. Uh, check out my social media for, uh, check out the description for social media. Uh, if you want to see more nerdy stuff and more issue by issue reviews for Rom Dire Wraiths, uh, the current Transformers series, Transformers Galaxies, and G.I. Joe, then subscribe. I do a lot of nerdy content on here. And also consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, Check out the tiers there, and you can help the channel keep on chugging. That's all from me for today, and have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Huge thanks to our patrons, including this month's $10 plus patron, Josh Adkins. Check out the description for more patrons and more info about how you can receive a shout-out here.